Hello, everybody. So, as promised, you are getting now the complete warm up for my Oriental dance class. Before starting with the movement, I want to explain several things. So, this warm up is a warm up where we start on the top and go down to the feet. It's an Oriental dance warm up where you will learn already the different isolation and different dance movements. This warm up comes from my 30 and more years experience and it is plus minus always the same in my dance classes. I recommend you learn it by heart so you don't need explanations from my part. I will first go through and it will be longer the explanations what this movement does and why it is in this warm up and then we'll go in a second video through the whole warm up with music without me talking so you have it it should normally be at about 10 minutes not more. I would highly recommend for my online dance class that you do this warm up before my class. So we don't spend too much time on warming up and we can spend more time on dancing and warming up through the dance movements. So if you are free, if you are ready, so now let's go. The first thing you need to know for all kind of dances and especially for oriental dance but also for the shandara dance your life experience is how to stand as a dancer and as a woman in your power so you need to be rooted and grounded so get your feet on the floor and feel the earth then the second thing knees always a little bit bent for the warm up, this might shift a little bit because we are also stretching. Then the hip. You want to have the hip here. You see this. You don't want it to be like this. You want it to stretch down. Stretch down in the back and up here. So when you are have this uh, position of your hip, you can feel the muscles here. And when you feel the muscles here, I always call them like the pillars of the sacred temple. Solar plexus is the sun and these are the pillars. And these are the muscles you can feel when the hip is in this position, okay? Then you open up the solar plexus. Then you get rid of everything which might be stiff here. Just put the shoulders down and the chin a little bit up. So in Oriental dance, there is one more very important point. So let's recapulate. Feet on the ground, knees bent, hip a little bit like this, solar plexus open, shoulders down, and the chin a little bit up. So now what you want to do is you want to take the upper body a little bit, like one millimeter front. And when you do this, so please do this with me, just stay there. You can feel already the pillars, as I said, of the temple, the muscles in front. So now like inhaling or something and you go one millimeter like if I would gently push you in the back here and you go just gently a little bit in front not too much this would be much too much it's just like okay and you feel these muscles here even more isn't it and you feel that this is present the presence your presence is here so when you are doing this, you are not like too much there and too proud or something. No, yes, you are proud and you are present. And this is what you want as a dancer. And of course, this is what you want for yourself as a woman in your life. So practice this way already of standing. And practice it not only before my dance experience and class, practice it in everyday life whenever you can. The more you practice it, the more you will become it. You will be just present with your beautiful energy and your beautiful self. So here you are. This is how we want to start when we start moving. For the warm-up exercise, you will open your legs a little bit more, ground yourself well, and then we start with the head. The first thing 
uh, we start, sorry, we with the breathing. We breathe in like this. You go here with the hand up, inhale, up, stop, and then exhale, open up. And this is not, this is completely done on purpose. The hands go like this. Inhale. Stop. And then you're here. Open up completely. Exhale. So when you are inhale, you take your hands to there. You watch up, you look up. And then from here, you round your, let your go your spine, go. Don't do this. You don't want to, you will hurt your back. To just stay grounded, you have your hip, as I have already been explaining. And from here, you let it go like this. We will need this later for any kind of movement in Oriental dance. So here, let go. And then you exhale. And when you exhale, you let also your arms go. So what is special about this kind of breathing? Of course, you might know it in uh, whenever you want to uh, get uh, slow down, get in other brain waves, you will inhale, stop, exhale slowly and slowly. This is a very well-known technique. But what we do at here is the hands. You have an energy meridian here. You have an energy flow here just in front of you. So with your hands, you go like this, caressing this energy meridian. You go up and you watch up. And so as I explained, round it, you open up the solar plexus and you let go. Here you let go. And when you open, it is also kind of surrendering. What do you have here? here? Ah, you have like divine energy, stars, the universe, your dreams, whatever it is for your subconscious mind or for your imagination here. You go there and then you open the sky of possibilities and then you exhale and it is like a rain shower uh, or something where you can just surrender to this and let it be, and let it sink. Then you go and do this three times, okay? So this is the first part. Do it consciously with what I said, and you will see an amazing difference just already starting like this. So now we do have the hat. Ground yourself well, bend the knees, and now you want to turn the head slowly, in one sense, and in the other sense. So when I do this, you let go. You take the weight of your head and let the weight of your head get you turning. So it is not with force, it is not with uh, my will, it is with letting go with the weight, the natural weight of your head. And of course, if you have any hurting, then you do it very slowly and you go into the hurt, respecting your limits always, but you just want to explore this. And you have to do it very slowly. And if there are really like a lot of a woman cannot, cannot let go behind here, are not able to do this. If this is really a problem for you, if there is something like totally stiff and you are doing like, Argh. please take an appointment with me and we will look into this. There is a neurosomatic release session very probably needed to have a look what is happening. Why is your shoulder so stiff? And don't tell me and don't tell yourself it is because I'm sitting and typing on, type to, on, on the computer the whole day. All reasons in your body why things are blocked are not only physical reasons. There are only always energetical, emotional, general, generational reasons behind it, and you don't want to carry them. You want to release them. So take an appointment with me if you find that some of these movements, these easy movements, 
you are not able to do and you are in pain. Okay, good. Next. One side, other side. Go as far as you can. And then to the shoulder. It's just feeling your neck, stretching your neck. Front and up. Front and up. And then we have this oriental, the hands shift. So how do you do this? You don't want to do this. You want to shift your head. So you have to find some muscles in the back of your neck to be able to just push your head. Yeah? It's like if I put my hands here, I was pulling on my ears to get the ear up to the hand here. Yeah? This is how it works. And it took me, for example, one year of doing it every day. So don't be desperate. It might take some time. And just be patient with yourself. You have just your brain has to connect the muscles in a way it never had before. It's like learning to walk. Next thing are the shoulders. Just turning, turning the shoulders front to back, front to back, back to front, back to front. Then one shoulder after the other. What you want to do here is you want to let the movement go to the center of your body. This is only shoulders, but you want to have this here. Okay, just let it go. And down in the back, up and down in the back. Most of the women, a lot of women, they go, they can go front up, and then they cannot let go in the back. The back is somewhere with your past. What is in the past? that you cannot let go. And the shoulders have a sacred language to tell a story. So if there is a story, you will not be able to do this correctly. And we can work on it, as I said. I won't repeat this every time, but really it is. If you feel pain and blocked, please take a one-on-one -on -one appointment with me and I can help you. Now, this one here is something interesting. Up, drop. Up. Drop. For oriental dance, you would have your hands here. Boom, boom. Yeah. And play around. Up and drop and drop and drop. It is lifting, dropping, lifting, placing. Okay, next movement is so we finish the head, the neck, and the shoulders. We go here to the thorax. So you go shifting side to side. The error would be this. So you want to have the shoulders horizontal. Figure it out, and then you go front and, and accelerate it because I'm only explaining the movement, okay? We will practice it in the next video. Back, front up, back into your body. Front up, back into your body. Back is not this, just Look at what you are doing. You want to open your back and you can take, it helps the hand and push here to open the back. Also, this is again a movement that a lot, a lot of women cannot do. Yes, in, open, open the back, be in the back and front, but up, front, front, not up is this. Front up is here. It really stretches everything, every muscle here. Back. Okay. So now we have this. We do side, front, side, back, side, front, side, back. Our sense up, side, front, side, back. And then you circle one side, you circle in the other side. If this is difficult, put your hand here and circle and help with the hand, like pushing to the side, pushing to the back, pushing to the side, pulling the front and see. Close your eyes and see that you are doing a horizontal circle with this point between your chest here. Now we are doing a circle virtually, vertically, front. Up, you can inhale in the back, into the body, center, front. Up, inhale, exhale, back, center. And now you are doing with the upper body, with just your chest, a circle. 
And then we do this in the other sense, okay? Up, front, center, back. Okay. Finished here. Now we go here. So just um, tight the hips and the belly and the legs and just push the hip to the side. So when you are here, you open your feet. You can't see my feet, but I'll explain it. You open your feet like a triangle, okay? So my leg here is somewhere triangle. It is not, when I would look here, you can even see this, it is not vertically under my hip. It is larger. So now I do have a triangle from my feet to the pelvis to the feet. Do have a, you need a triangle. So figure this out. Make the triangle bigger. If this is too big, you can, you will just know it. It is like uh, the position, the right position is totally stable, totally comfortable. It's like if you are staying there and you have an argument with somebody, men can do this uh, very good. We as women have very often to learn it, standing firm in this triangle. So now you have the triangle, you want to, to um, uh, contract your body again to your mm, belly <laughs> and you want to go to the side and the side if I now look down my hip is further than my feet and here the same thing so this would not be enough you need to see the stretch here mm -hmm. so with the upper body you stay in the center with the hip you go right and left do strengthen all the muscles around the hip because you don't want to go like this and also think of the hip position. We already said the hip position is here. So when you go here, you really go into the hip joint. You don't want to go there. You see, this is different. So be mindful of that. And you don't have to bend your knees here because we are working just for stretching the hip. When this is done, bend your knees and do a figure eight. So now your hip is doing an eight, front and back, front and back. And then on the other side, this is already a dance movement, which I will explain at another, in another video, but it is part of the warm up. You go up and up. These are the different figure eights of Oriental dance, up and down, up and down. Yes. So the next movement is a movement we don't do very often, but I will explain it here so you can have it. It is for strengthening your muscles. Very interesting movement. So for this movement, you will sit on the floor. And if you have any Oh, sorry. If you have any problems with your knees, don't do it. Okay. But this is to strengthen the muscles here. And at the same time, it is a movement. So what you do when you're sitting here like this, um, you want to lift your hip just a little bit. So I don't know how you see this. Um, you will lift the hip so that it, it just the right. It's not, this is too much lifted. You just want to be here and with your, uh, but you are still uh, like um, being, touching the hips, okay? So now what you do, you sit here and you go from there, like turning the hip, one sense and the other sense. What you want to do when you turn your hip, you want to do it slowly, side, front, 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 very much front, just, then side and back, yeah, here, and the other side, up and up and. Because I know when you go front, this is when it is a little bit more um, challenging. So when you have done this, yeah, then we sit, let me just check it, show you. We sit here, and this is just for strengthening the muscles. And you go here and do the scissor kickers, okay? <laughs> For strengthening your muscles here. When you have done this, we do this movement here. In this movement, 
you can hear my legs. I think you can hear it on the floor. You want to have the same rhythm and do it quickly here. And this is our exercise for shimmies, which I will explain later. When this is done, you will sit like this. So we're sitting on my belt. You sit like this. <laughs> so when you sit like this, what you want to have is the, in, uh, if it's possible, uh, it depends how supple you are. Your knee in the middle of your body here. Yes, like this. And then you go a little bit like that. Snake arms, front, snake arms. And then you count until three and you get up without your hands. So getting up without the hands, how does this work? You just need, of course, you need to have a certain degree of flexibility. If you want to go up here, you see, it's easy. Just swing a little bit front, just like this. Perhaps I show it here. I'm sitting on my pearls <laughs> here, yeah? Just easy, and then you can just step up. No problem. So you need to get this swing. <laughs> you don't see me any longer. That's, that's all, that's the exercise. Of course, we do it several times, so you get the strength out of it. And actually, I would really highly recommend if you have any difficulties of doing this one here for a long time that you just practice it every morning or every day you will have stronger muscles and you need them and if you if these muscles are not strong do bicycle do steps whatever you can do you need these muscles being very strong for oriental dance because we are always dancing with bent knees and in the chandra dance your life experience you need to be totally uh, in your body strength and healthy. If you are not yet there, you will be there practicing the dance and you will become a wonderful spiritual woman connected to Mother Earth, connected to the spirit world, knowing about how to follow and trust yourself and your intuition. And your body has to be and will be strong and healthy and i'll help you with this with different other things we are doing but of course dancing is the most fun so i think that's all about the um explanation about the warm-up i hope you enjoyed it and now i'll put the music don't explain anything and we'll practice it together you can then just take the second video for just practicing Take this one, listen at least once, perhaps even twice, so you have the whole explanations about the magic of this warm-up. Thank you for watching.